Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video what we're going to do is cover Remix JS. And this is a great new JavaScript framework that allows us to build full stack web applications. Now in the front end, this acts as a higher level framework that builds on top of React. So it's kind of like Next.js. So it utilizes the React library and builds on top of it to ha have additional features that you won't get right off the bat when utilizing a React app. And also this has server side capabilities. So you can also have your server in here, thus having a full on application, full stack application. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to learn how we can utilize Remix. And to do this, we're going to be building this jokes app. So this is going to be a jokes app. And let me just quickly zoom in here. And simply all this app does is when you click on read jokes, you can over here see a list of different jokes. And you can go ahead and click on all of these different jokes. And you can see the jokes themselves. So if I click on, for instance, Frisbee, I was wondering why the Frisbee was getting bigger and then it hit me. That was the joke. We have an elevator joke. My first time using an elevator was an uplifting experience. The second time let me down. That was pretty funny, actually. I didn't read that before. And so this is the application that we are going to be building. And of course, we can add our own jokes. So I can add, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna actually write a joke because I can't think of one off the top of my head. Let's just call this joke shoe, and let's just say whatever content. So we can go ahead and add this joke, and oh, the joke was too short. So we have some validation in here. So let's just go here, add some more jokes, whatever, whatever, whatever. We can go ahead, and you can see that now this joke has been added. So we have the joke of shoe. And then over here, we have the content itself. And what's nice about this, if I refresh, it's actually saved because we're going to have a full on database system for this. We're going to have a full stack application. So this is going to be making requests to our backend and our backend is going to save that data inside of our database. And when we want to retrieve it, it's going to retrieve it from our database. And of course, we're going to be using the remix uh, server to do this. Now this right here is nothing special. I didn't come up with this application. Actually, if you go to remix.run.com, which is their official website, you can just go over here to read the docs. And they actually have a very comprehensive uh, tutorial with uh, building this exact same application. So I'm just really just copying what's going on here. So if you prefer reading uh, uh, the documentation, you can just go ahead and do that yourself. Or you prefer the video format, then well, I'm going to be covering this documentation. So I'm going to be covering this and actually at the very bottom, they cover some things that I won't be covering in the video like authentication and um, SEO things that you might want to read out. So I'm not going to be covering those on the video. So maybe after I finish the uh, the project itself, then you guys can kind of do that on your own. So let's actually go ahead and just start out and build our first remix application. So let's just get right into it. In order to start working with remix, we need to first create a remix app. And this actually isn't very difficult. However, there are some prerequisites. So if you go to the documentation, you can see that some of the prerequisites listed over here. So you need to have Node.js installed. If you don't have Node.js installed, go ahead and go to the Node landing page and install it. It's a relatively simple download, regardless of the operating system that you're at. Now note, if you do have node installed, you have to have node version 14 or greater. So what you can do is that you can open up a terminal. So you can open up a terminal or your command prompt inside of uh, if you're on a Windows machine. Let me just open up a new terminal window. Let's see here, new window. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And just to see that you have node installed, what you can do, and let me just quickly zoom in here. Zoom, 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 just so you guys can see. You guys can just simply do a node-v and you should get a version. So I have node version 16 installed and that's good. That is awesome. 
Now you also need to have NPM installed. And if you installed Node, you should also have NPM because it comes with it. But of course it has to be version seven or greater. You can do the exact same thing in your terminal. You can just do NPM uh, version and I have version eight. All right. And the last thing that you need is a code editor. I'm gonna be using VS Code and they also recommend VS Code. So once you have these prerequisites, this is really all you need. You can actually create an app. Now in terms of knowledge, knowledge prerequisites, you should know JavaScript of course, and you should know a little bit of React because the front end portion is going to be built on top of React. Now in terms of the back end aspect of it, you should have a basic understanding of what the back end is doing and just the basic understanding of HTTP APIs. So we're going to be sending requests, they're gonna be either get, post, put, and delete requests. And if that didn't make any sense to you, then maybe you should pause the video and learn a little bit about the back end. I have an express crash course on my channel that you can watch as well, and that teaches you really very simple things that you need to know about building a back end application. Okay, so that's just the knowledge prerequisite. Now that we got that covered, what we can do is we can execute this command, npx create dash remix at latest. And this is going to create a remix application for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this command. You can write it out if you want to. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move into whatever directory we want to create this application in. I'm gonna create it in my desktop directory. And you know what, let's just type this out. We're gonna do npx create remix and of course we want the latest version. So we're gonna say at latest. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to execute this. And this should create this application inside of my desktop directory. Now this is going to ask us a few questions. It's gonna ask us where our application is going to live. So over here, this is just the path to our desktop directory. And then this over here is the name of the application. So what we can do is we can just say, the path to our desktop directory, and we can call this whatever it is that we want. We call it jokes app. Now over here, this is going to ask us what type of server we want. So we can have an express server, we can have a fly.io server, never really heard of that, Netlify server, etc. We're just gonna have the pre-built remix app server that is built on top of express. So we can just go ahead and choose that, and that's the default option. Now over here, TypeScript or JavaScript, I love TypeScript and Remix really works well with TypeScript. Now, if you don't know TypeScript, that's completely fine. There's not gonna be a lot of TypeScript-y things in this tutorial, but we will be using TypeScript for this app. And lastly, do you want us to install all of the, all of the oh, I can't even talk right now, all of the dependencies? Well, yes, let's go ahead and do that as well. So let's go ahead and install, and this might take some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna wait for this to completely finish installing, and once it installs, I'm gonna open it inside of VS Code, so my text editor of choice. So I'll see you guys in the next section. Once that finished downloading, I went ahead and I opened it up inside of VS Code, which of course is my favorite text editor. Now you can see here inside of this Remix application that we created, we have a bunch of different files and folders. Now specifically what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna be working on the stuff inside of the app directory. This is actually where our application code is going to live and where we're gonna be working on for 99% of the time. Now in here you can see we also have a bunch of files and folders and I actually don't want them here at the moment. And the reason for this is I don't wanna overwhelm you with a lot of remix concepts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of delete a lot of these things and we're gonna re-add them later on in the crash course. So inside of the apps directory, we have the routes directory as well as the styles directory. So let's go ahead and let's right click on them. So we're gonna right click on them and we're just gonna completely delete them. We're gonna go ahead and delete them. Now I want to go to the root.tsx file. This right here is going to house a component, a React component that is going to serve as the root of our whole application. So if you are familiar with React, which again, I expect you to be, 
This is kind of similar to the index.tsx or JSX file uh, or the app.jsx uh, file. It's going to be a simple component that's going to house all the other components and pages within our application. Right here, you can see that there's a lot going on. Just completely forget about it. Let's just completely get rid of this. And what we're going to do is very simply just create our own function based component called app. So let's go here and let me just see if I need to zoom in some more. Let's just zoom in one more actually. So we're going to go over here. We're going to say const and we're going to say const uh, app. So we're going to say const app and actually let's go ahead and export default this. So we're going to say export default and we're going to say function app. It's going to be a function based component. And then in here, we're going to return some JSX. And this is going to be the root of our application. So what we actually need to do is return a full on HTML template. So we have to actually have a real HTML uh, uh, application. So we're going to have HTML as our first tag. And then we're going to have head over here. We're going to have meta. And we're going to give this a char set of UTC or UTF. UTF-8. And then we can also give it a title. So we can say remix jokes app. And then our application code is going to live inside of the body tag. So this is just basic HTML. And in here, we're just going to simply add an H1. We're going to say hello world. And this is all we need in order to run our application. So to run our application, Let's actually go to the uh, package.json file and let's look at the scripts that we have. So if we go to the scripts, we have a build script, a dev script, a post install script and a start script. Now we want to run this in development mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to execute npm run dev, which behind the scenes is going to execute remix dev, which is going to run our remix application in development mode. So let's open up our terminal. And then in here, let's run npm run dev. So as you can see here, we have our application running on localhost 3000. So let's go here and let's open this up. And you can see that we have our well, our root component. Awesome. And now if I were to make any changes to my application, and I were to, you know, add maybe a few exclamation marks, and then save, and then refresh my app, you can see here that uh, we have well, our changes. Now, one thing that I want to note is that if I make another change, and then I save it, won't it be nice if it can just hot reload so it can just detect the changes and then just change automatically without me having to refresh? Well, there's actually a way to do this. So Remix has this really cool component called uh, reload. So we're going to go over here and we're going to import a specific built in Remix component. So from Remix, we are going to import a component called live reload. And this is going to, well, detect any changes inside of our Remix application and just reload our application if that happens without us having to press the uh, uh, refresh button. So we have to just utilize this component inside of our body. So what we can simply say here is live reload. And now if you were to refresh, and let's just quickly just refresh our page just one more time so it can detect the live reload. And now if I did this and I refreshed, you can see here that now I don't have to refresh my, my page because of this component. Now, one thing that I want to note is that we probably don't want this component inside of our production application. We only want this in development. So what we can do is we can use the node env environment variable to detect whether we're in uh, production or development. So what I mean by that is we can do process dot env and then dot node env. And this is going to be equal to development if we are in development and it's going to be equal to production if we're in production. So we're going to say that hey, if this is equal to development, then what we want to do is render the live reload component. If not, and this is just a ternary operator, we just don't want to render anything. So let's just go ahead and quickly save that. And if I were to refresh, 
and let's make a change here. We should see that change and we were not gonna get this component in production. All right, cool. So the next thing that I actually want to work on is uh, pages. So I wanna work on actually adding different pages inside of our application. So if you guys remember the jokes app, once we get to this over here, we're at the path of slash jokes. When we click on a specific joke, so when we click on a specific joke, we're gonna have the path of slash jokes and then whatever that joke ID is. And if we want to create a joke, we're gonna be at slash jokes slash new. And of course we also have the home directory, which is just slash, which was just the landing page. So I wanna work on creating these different pages. And of course we're gonna do that with routes. So let's actually get to that in the next section. In this section of the video, we're gonna learn about route handling. So remember, route handling is a way that we can have multiple pages within our application. And once we go to that page, we can render different components. Now, inside of Remix, to create routes, what we need to do is we need to go to the app directory. And then inside of the app directory, we need to create a routes directory. And this has to be called routes because Remix is going to detect this directory and for every single file inside of this routes folder, it's going to create a specific page for it. So if we were to go ahead and create this directory and then in here, we are going to create another component called index.ts. So the index.ts is going to be is going to be the root path. So index.ts is gonna be this right over here. Now, if we were to change this, so if you were to rename this to something like jokes.ts, well, this is going to be the component that is going to be displayed once we go to the slash jokes page. Now, if we just want to go to the landing page and display a specific, uh, uh, a specific uh, component, then we can just simply rename this to index.tsx. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna rename this to index.tsx. And very simply in here, what we're gonna do is gonna create a function based component. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna export default function. We're gonna call this index route. So we're gonna call this index route. And then in here, we're just very simply, and let's just return we're just gonna return a div that says hello index route. Very, very easy. So let's go ahead and let's save this. And if we were to go to our app, you can see that we're actually not seeing anything. So in order to actually utilize these routes inside of the root.tsx, what we need to utilize is another Remix component called outlet. So what this component is going to do is look at the path that we're in and then determine what component it should utilize. For example, if we're on the root path, then it's going to utilize the index.tsx file. If we're on the slash jokes path, then if we had a uh, jokes.tsx file, it's going to utilize that instead. So now what we can do is we can actually have this outlet right over here. And if we were to save this, you can see that we have hello index root. And now what we can do is we can actually just get rid of this. Now just, if this doesn't make that much sense to you, let's actually create our, uh, let's actually create our jokes.tsx file. And hopefully that clears it up a little bit. So inside of here, we want a path for slash jokes. So in order to do that, we're going to call this component jokes.tsx. The name of this is important. This is going to be the path of our page. So slash jokes. Now in here, let's create another component. So we're going to create another function based component. And we're going to say export default function. And let me just close this off. And we're going to do jokes route. And then in here, we're going to very simply return a div element. In here, we're gonna say jokes. So we're gonna say jokes. And actually they have, uh, 
they have an, an emoji as the O, so maybe I can just quickly grab that from there, or maybe I can just grab it from here. Let's see if I can do that. Let's grab that. And if you guys don't have this, that's completely fine. You can go to the website itself and grab it, or you guys can just use jokes itself. And then we're just gonna go ahead and save that. So this is the jokes, uh, this is the jokes directory, or this is a jokes uh, uh, page. So now if we go to slash jokes, you can see that now we're utilizing this. So again, what the outlet is doing is figuring out what uh, path we're at. And then once it figures out what path we're at, it figures out what component it needs to render. So if we are at the slash path, it's going to render the index.tsx. If we're on the slash jokes path, it's going to render this one right over here. In this section of the course, we're going to talk about how we can create nested routes. Now, you might be asking, what are nested routes? Well, let's go back over here to this example. And you can see here we have a slash page. And this is, of course, going to our home page. And over here, we have a slash jokes page. However, as you can see, we also have a slash jokes slash new page. And then over here, a slash joke slash whatever the joke ID page is. So you can see here that we have a bunch of other pages that start with slash jokes. And these are nested routes. Now, in order to create nested routes, what we can do is very simply just create a directory. So not a file, a folder that is called the exact same thing as the route that we're trying to nest. So in this case, we're going to say jokes. Now in here, what we can do is we can create a slash new dot TSX. And what that is going to do is it's going to hit this particular component when we go to slash jokes slash new. Now, if we want to go to slash jokes and then slash, we can either just have this or inside of our jokes directory, we can have another index dot TSX. And so inside of this index.tsx, we can create another function based component. So over here we can say export default, and then we can say function, and we can say jokes index route. We can go ahead and invoke this. And then in here, what we can do is very simply just have a div. We can also have some random jokes. So here we can say, here's a random joke random joke uh, or joke not jokes and then right over here we can have another p tag that has a joke itself so this is this is a joke from the website itself so i was wondering why the frisbee was getting bigger and then it hit me then it hit me haha <laughs> very funny so that is the joke so now if I were to go to, well, slash jokes and then slash, which is that page itself, I don't see that at the moment. Now, in order to actually get this, what we need to do is utilize that outlet component inside of the jokes.tsx. So what this outlet is going to do is it's going to look inside of the jokes directory and then figure out what component it needs to utilize uh, uh, depending on the path, of course. So in here, what we can do now is we can just import from Remix. So from Remix, the outlet. So the outlet component. And in here now, what we can do is very simply just add this outlet component. And if we were to save this, you can see now we have this. So now we have it. So again, what is going on here? It seems like this outlet component is very magical. So what this outlet component is going to do, is gonna figure out what file we're in. So we're in these, uh, the jokes file. So the path is going to be slash jokes. And then it's gonna figure out, okay, inside of our actual application, what path are we at? So at this point, we are at the slash jokes and then just slash, which is basically just slash jokes. And so what it does is, okay, because we're in the jokes component, it's going to go to the jokes, uh, uh, jokes directory inside of our file. And the slash, remember, is always going to be the index.tsx file. 
So this outlet is going to be this index.tsx file. Now, if we were to, of course, change this up and add another maybe new.tsx. So inside of here, we're going to have a new.tsx. And then in here, we can create another function based component. So we can say export default function and we can say new joke route. And let me just close this up here. And in here, we're going to want to have a little bit more complicated uh, HTML or JSX. We're going to have a div. We're going to have a P tag that says add, uh, add your own joke. And then in here, we're going to have a form and we're going to give this form a method. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but we're going to give this form a method of post. So don't worry about this for now. We'll talk about it later. But in here, we're going to have just a typical form stuff. So let's have a div. And then in here, we're going to have a label. Let's get rid of that HTML4. And then in here, we can have name and we can have an input in here. And we can simply say that the name of this is equal to name. And so this is going to be the name of our joke. Let's actually copy and paste this and now add the content. So we're going to say over here, content and let's actually make this a text area rather than an input because the content might be a little bit big and we can get rid of the type and we can call this name content and the last thing that we need is the submit button so let's put that in a div itself let's have a button and let's go here we're going to say type submit and we're going to give it a class name of button. We'll style this a little bit later. Actually, you know what? We'll just leave it as is for now. And we're going to give it an add. Actually, let's just give it the class name just in case I forget of button. OK, so this is our uh, component. And now this is all we have to do. So if we were to go ahead and save this, we don't have to hook this up to our jokes at any point in time this outlet is going to figure it out. So if we were to go to slash new, which is going to be this component, it's going to figure out that, okay, inside of this outlet, it needs to uh, uh, render this component. So if I were to go here and say new, you can see that we got our very, very gross um, uh, page, but it's working. It's completely working. And these, these are nested routes. So one thing I want to fix just right away is uh, the label should be content and not name here. So let's just quickly fix that and we can completely just maybe comment this out for now. So I hope I hope this makes sense. So this is really how we are going to be creating navigations inside of our application. Now, you might be thinking the last real important thing that we need to worry about when it comes to routes are uh, these routes. So these dynamic routes. So over here we have, okay, the slash page, and then over here we have the slash new. But what about here when we're utilizing the jokes ID, which could be whatever. Uh, and so this that's what we'll talk about in the next section. In this section, what we're gonna do is talk about how we can create dynamic routes. So remember, when I go to slash jokes slash anything, I want to render a specific page for that. So let's go ahead and do it right now. So in order to create a dynamic routes, what we're going to need to do is go to the jokes directory. And then inside of this jokes directory, what we're going to create is another component. Now, this component is going to be special because, of course, it's going to be dynamic. So the naming of this is going to be a little bit different to specify that this is going to be a dynamic route. What we're going to do is say dollar sign and then we're going to say joke ID dot T S X. And this dollar sign means that whatever path I go to. So if I go to say slash jokes slash whatever or, you know, whatever it is, it could be whatever. Well, that is going to be the jokes ID. This right here is going to be the jokes ID. And we're going to want to render a specific component based on this dynamic route. 
So that is really all we have to do. We just have to specify dollar sign and then whatever we append here is actually going to be stored inside of a jokes ID variable that we're going to talk about and get a little bit later in the course. So right now, let's just create a very simple component for this. So we're going to say export default and we're going to say joke route. So export default joke route. And then in here, we're going to return and we're going to return. Of course, I need to make this a function. So let's do that function joke route. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to return. Here's your hilarious joke. So this is going to be an actual uh, joke. So we're going to say, here's your, I'm just going to say, here's your joke. And then in here, we're going to have another joke. And let's say, why don't you find hippos hiding in trees? So why don't you find hippos hiding in trees? They're really good at it. I don't really understand that joke, but whatever they're really good at let me just quickly try to understand why don't you find hippopotamuses hiding in trees they're really good at it i don't understand that joke <laughs> but whatever it's a joke and so now what ended up what ends up happening if we go to slash jokes slash whatever you can see here that we get this path now if we go to slash jokes uh, without a path that's going to hit the index so that's, that's going to have priority. If we go to slash new, that this is going to have priority. However, if you go to slash whatever, then we're always going to hit this. Now, of course, what we want to do is we want to get this ID and then fetch a specific joke based on that ID. So that's eventually what we want to do. But before we do that, our application is really, really ugly. So I think we need to style it a little bit just to make it a little bit prettier. Now that is what we're going to be doing in the next section. So the last thing that I want to quickly talk about is let's go to our jokes.tsx. And what I want to do is just wrap this inside of a main tag, the outlet inside of the main tag. So we have our, our header over here and then our main and then our outlet. In this section of the video, what we're going to do is learn how we can style a remix application. And the way that we style remix applications are going to be a little bit different than when styling other applications. So other applications, we either add something in the link tag or we just import these styles into a specific component. And there we go. We have the styles remix with these styles actually does something very, very similar to the outlet component. So again, I know I've probably explained this a million times, but what this outlet component does is it tracks whatever path we're at. And then depending on what path we're at, it renders, it renders one of these components. So if we're at the slash jokes path, it's going to render this component. If we're at the slash joke slash new, then it's going to render uh, this component right over here. And the way that we're going to style our components is going to be very, very similar to the way that we actually render components. So you know what, let's just get right into it. So to style components, what we're going to need to do is create a styles directory. So let's go here and we're going to create a styles directory. And then in here, let's create an index.css. So we're going to say index.css and this is going to style. So this is going to style this, uh, this, uh, where is it? This route right over here, the index.tsx, um, route or component, which is just the slash page. So in here, we're just going to get the body and very simply, we are going to give it a color and we're going to give it a color of, um, TSL because we're going to give it a little bit of a gradient. So we're going to say zero, zero percent, one hundred percent, and then we're also going to give it a background image. So let's give it a background image, and this is going to be a uh, radial gradient. And then inside of this radial gra uh, gradient, we're going to say that it's going to be a circle, 
and then we're gonna say RGBA, and let's just do one, two, uh, one, five, two. And you can get this from the documentation if you don't wanna copy it out yourself. I'm just gonna copy it out for you guys. And then we're gonna do 0% over here. You don't really have to understand what's going on here. It's just creating a gradient in the background. So let's go here, let's add some more numbers. All right, let's make this 35%. And then the last thing that I want to add is RGBA and then we're going to say 58 and then over here 13 and then over here 85, 1 and then 100%. So the, these are the styles that I want applied to this component right over here, the index.tsx. So where is that component? This one. So in order to actually apply these styles to this component, what I have to do is export a link function. Because remember, when we want to style things, we're gonna have some sort of link function. And then in here we have rel style sheet. And then in here we have the href. And so in order to actually achieve this exact thing in Remix, all we have to do is import something called link function. So we're going to import something called links function and we're going to get this from remix. So let's get rid of that. So we're going to say from remix. And then what we are going to do is say export const and here we're going to create the links. And this is going to be of type link links function. And then what we are going to do is well this is going to be a function and it's going to return an array that's gonna have those links. So we're gonna say array, and then in here we're gonna say, it's gonna be an array of objects, and over here we're gonna say that the rel is style sheet. So the rel is style sheet, and then of course the href, what we wanna do is we want to import the href. So what we're gonna say is import styles URL from, now we're gonna to move to the styles directory, and then we're gonna go to the index.css. So we're gonna go get that, and then we're gonna apply that right over here. So we're gonna say the href is equal to this. And we're gonna go ahead and export this. So this might seem a little bit magical, but by doing this, once we hit this component, Remix is going to know to render this link tag over here with these styles. Now in order to actually see it, and right now it's not gonna work, in order to actually see it, we need to go to our root.tsx uh, and we need to add something right over here that is similar to outlet. So remember, outlet is going to render a component based on uh, whatever route we're in. Right now we want something, another component that's going to render a specific link element based on whatever route we're in. And well, you can imagine this is going to be called link. And so what we can do here is can, we can add that link component, or it's gonna be called links, sorry about that. We're gonna add this links component right over here. So what this is going to do is once we hit a specific path, it's going to see if we're exporting anything inside of that component. If we are, it's going to use this link tag to style our page. So enough talking, let's just see if this works. So let's go here and let me just close this because I don't have anything. Let's go here, see me searching and you can see that we have our component nice and styled. And just to prove to you, just so you can really understand this, if we go to our head, so let's go to our head. Let me just zoom in here for you guys you can see that link tag. So you can see that link tag for that specific page. However, notice this link tag when I change the path. So let's say I go to slash jokes. Now it's completely gone. You can see that we don't have a link tag anywhere. Let me open it. You can see here now we don't have a link tag anymore. So we only render that link once we are at that specific page for that link. And now all we really have to do is create the styles, import them to whatever component we want to, and then just export to this function inside of that component, and then we're gonna render those styles. So that's really about all we need to know with uh, styling components. It's relatively easy and really simple with Remix. 
So let's actually just go ahead and style our application as a whole now. And to do this, I am really just going to be doing a lot of copying and pasting. So I highly recommend that you go to the documentation and just copy the styles there. But I'll do the copying and pasting together if you guys want to see. Now it's time to style the rest of our application. So in order to do this, I'm not going to go ahead and write out all the styles that would take forever and take the focus away from remix itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the remix dot run page and I'll have this in the description below. And what you want to do is you want to go to the styling section. And as I said, uh, I am literally making this video based on this documentation. So there's nothing really special. As you can see here, we just wrote this code out and I was just copying and pasting it basically. So what we're going to do, and let me just zoom in here. So we already did this part and uh, we, now what we want to do is we want to style the rest of our application. So go right over here and let's say that the first thing we want to do is just style everything globally. So we're going to go here. We're going to create inside of our CSS file or CSS directory. We're going to create a global. So global dot CSS. So we're going to create that. And then we're going to just copy everything except for the font face because we don't we don't you're going to have to download that. and I don't want to do that. So let's just copy everything here. Look, all these styles that we would have to do otherwise. Da, 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 look at all that. Do you guys really expect me to write all this stuff out? No way. <laughs> like this is taking way too long. I didn't know there was this many styles. So let's go ahead and copy all that and let's just paste it in there. Let's just go ahead and just close this, meaning we're done with it. My goodness, 200 lines of code. Holy moly. All right, so let's just close this out. And so over here, there is a global dash large. So this is maybe for like media queries as well. Let's actually just click on this copy button. And then let's go here and let's, what was it called again? Global large dot CSS. So we're going to say global large.css let's paste that in and then let's close that off let's open medium so let's just create this file first in here so we're going to create this file.css and then in here we're going to have these styles so let's paste those styles in and then we're going to style the index.css as well as the jokes.css so in here let's copy this so we're going to go ahead and copy this. And so this is in the slash index.css. So I guess we're going to be overriding this right over here. So let's just paste that in. And then the last thing that we want to do is style. Where is it? Style the jokes.css. So let's just copy that. And then let's go over here and let's create a jokes dot CSS and let's just paste that in there. So now the next thing that we have to do, of course, is uh, have that link function. So you can see here, that's exactly what it's telling us to do. And you can see why this is an array because we can have actually multiple links depending on the, the screen size. So let's just copy this very quickly. So inside of the root, what we're going to do is we're going to import the link function. So let's go to our root.tsx and we'll just close this off for now. So let's import the link function. And well, I guess we have remix. So we could just say import the link function type or the links function type. And then we're going to import all of our styles. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I know right now there's a lot of copying and pasting, but well, in the beginning of the course, there was no copying and pasting. And don't worry, once we're done this section, there's going to be pretty much no copying and pasting. These are just styles and we already learned about these concepts. So now let's go over here and let's add the links. And these are going to be global styles. So they're going to be applied to everything. So any styles that we actually put inside of the root, are going to be global styles. You're going to be applied to every single component. So let's get rid of that for now. So that's pretty much it for the root component. So let's close that off. Now let's go to the routes.jokes and we need to do the exact same thing that we did thus far. So let's just close everything off again. Da, 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 da. Close, 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 close. Wow. This is really busy. 
So we are going to go to the jokes.tsx. In here, we're going to import links function. I don't know why they do like multiple imports. That's kind of strange, but and then over here, we're going to say, um, let's see, am I in the right? Yeah, no, this is the exact one. So yeah, so we're gonna get this, and then we're gonna import these styles. So we're gonna import these styles as well. And we're gonna paste that in there. So we're gonna paste those styles in there. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and just export this links function. And you can see here that this is very, very bare bone. So let's actually just copy all of their, um, let's just copy all of this right over here. So we're gonna copy all of this HTML just so we can have more HTML with some styles as well. So let's go here and let's copy that in. Now, one thing that I do want to note is that right here, you can see we're utilizing this link component. Now, if I were to go over here, let me go ahead and import this. This is very, very similar. So this is, oh, well, it's not even just very similar. It's exactly the same as, well, let me, wait, let me actually import it correctly. I'm getting some errors. So let me just import all of the JSX and not the, uh, not the function itself. Let's import that. Let's paste that in there and let's import this link component. So this component is very similar to how you would utilize it in React Router. So you would get this link component and then you would click on this link and it would move from path to path. So this is you know, something that is not very difficult. I do expect you to understand this. So you have this link component and when you click on this link component, you go to this slash, you go to the slash page. If you click on say this link component, you go to the new page. So you go, you get redirected to the, the slash joke slash new page. So let's go ahead and let's save that. And that should be it when it comes to styling. Let's lastly go over here. Do we need anything to change? We just need to change a little bit of the, um, a little bit of the uh, HTML. So let's just copy this HTML. And again, this is just HTML or JSX or whatever. Nothing, not, not a huge deal. So let's just go here instead of having hello uh, index, let's just change it to this and let's import link from Remix. So let's see if there's anything else that we need to do. Okay, that's it. Then we're gonna move on to the database and don't worry, we won't be doing any copying and pasting when going to the database. So if you go to our app, you can see that now it's nice and styled. Awesome, everybody. Sorry, I went to localhost 300, not 3000. You can see here that we got these styles. If I click here, that this is what this link is doing. So when I click on this, it's moving me to slash jokes. If I click on this, it moves me to slash jokes slash new. Uh, just to prove this to you, you can see here, add your own and it moves me to slash jokes slash new. And over here, it takes me to um, slash joke slash some joke ID. We haven't really done this yet at the moment. Okay, so I hope hopefully you guys uh, bared with me with this copying and pasting. We just had to copy and paste this HTML. I'll also have the, um, the uh, repo up on GitHub if you wanna copy and paste from there. But we just had to copy and paste some JSX as well as some styles. Now we can actually start moving with making our application functional and well it is functional now but we can make it a full stack application with our server so let's get onto that in the next section now that we worked a lot in the front end aspect of remix let's actually look at the server side capabilities now remember the server is the thing that is going to be interacting with the database and the front end so it's kind of just right in the middle so the front end is gonna make a request to the server. The server is then going to interact with the database, get the data and then give it back to the client. So let's go ahead and create our server. And that's what we're gonna do in this section. And specifically, we're gonna work on setting up the database inside of our server. So we're gonna be using a SQL database. Specifically, we're gonna be using SQL Lite because we can very, very easily configure that inside of our local machine. And we're gonna be using an ORM, an extremely popular node ORM called Prisma. So an ORM is just an easier way to interact with our SQL database. 
or it could be any kind of database, but an ORM allows us to interact with our database in an object-oriented fashion rather than writing real SQL queries. So let's go ahead over here and inside of our terminal, what we're going to do is install Prisma onto this jokes project. Now, if you're interested to learn more about Prisma, I do have a Prisma crash course. It is, I think, by far the best ORM for Node.js applications. In my opinion, there is nothing better. I've worked with a lot of ORMs and I just, I love Prisma. So let's just go ahead and install Prisma. So we're gonna do an npm install dash dash save dash dev, and we're gonna install Prisma. So let's go ahead and install that. And along with Prisma, we also have to install at Prisma client. So let's just install that as well. So we're gonna say at Prisma dash client. So now that we installed that, now oops something was wrong here so at prisma what am i doing wrong here yes of course misspelled it prisma dash client so now what we want to do is initialize our prisma project so let's go ahead and do that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to open this and you should notice a prisma directory be created after we run this command so let me just clear this we're going to do npx Prisma and we're going to initialize a Prisma project and we're going to say that hey we want this to utilize a SQLite database so we're going to say data source so data source dash provider so data source dash provider is going to be SQLite so let's go ahead and execute this and it's going to say well do you want to proceed of course I want to proceed why would I execute this command so let's just da, da 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 and there we go. So now we should have a Prisma directory somewhere inside of our application. And it doesn't seem as though we have that yet. Um, hmm, I'm a little confused as to why. Let me just zoom out a little bit here, just so we can see, am I in the right directory? It seems as though I am. I definitely would have thought I would have a Prisma directory. Am I in? No, what's going on here? Okay, so let's try to execute this command again. Let's do mpx Prisma init. Oops, sorry, got about that guys. Dash dash, oh, not date source. Oh my goodness, date uh, is gonna be called data source. We're gonna do SQLite. So that should fix the, uh, the issue that we have. Okay, so now we got an environment variable and we also got, uh, we should have a Prisma file and we do, or Prisma folder. And then in here, you can see we have this schema.prisma and this is where we're going to connect to our database. In this case, our database is just a simple file inside of our application. You can see here, it's moving into dash dev. And we're also going to add the schema of our application. So we're going to add, you know, the jokes as well. So if we want to add a jokes table, and this is just basic SQL knowledge, but essentially what this is doing is, is adding a table inside of our application. What we would say is, okay, we want a jokes table with an ID. We're going to say that this is of type string, and we're going to say that this is a primary key. So we're going to say at ID, and then at default. Again, if you, if this is a little bit confusing to you, um, check out my Prisma a crash course. It's relatively quick and you'll learn all about how to interact with your SQL database with Prisma. Let's also have a created at status and we're gonna say this is of type date time. So we're gonna have a type date time and we're gonna give it a default value so we don't have to always provide it. So we're gonna say default of now. So we're gonna say default of now. Let's also say updated at, we'll say that this is also a date time and we're gonna give this a value of updated at. So whenever we update it, what this is going to do is it's going to uh, get the timestamp, your current timestamp and assign it to the updated at column. Let's also give it a name, which is just gonna be a very simple string. And the last thing that we we'll wanna provide is the content, which will also be a very simple string. So let's just go ahead and let's save this. And now in order to uh, push this inside of our Prisma database, 
what we need to execute is npx prisma db push. So what this is going to do, apologies, is it's going to get our SQLite database and add this new table into that SQLite database. So once we execute this, we can just click generate and there we go. And there we go. So this seems all fine and dandy. We actually synced our database uh, with this table, with this information right over here. Okay, so that's pretty much all we have to do in order to uh, set up our database. That's pretty much it. Now, let's actually start interacting with our database and our server uh, with the front end. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want to seed some data. So seeding data, if you don't know what that is, is just having some initial data inside of our database once we hit development mode. So just for development purposes, we might want to have initial data rather than having an, just a blank slate. So what we want to do is we want to create a seed for this. So inside of our uh, prisma.ts file or prisma directory, what we can create is a seed.ts file. And in here, what we can do is we can uh, push some data, so we can push some data onto our Prisma database. So again, this isn't really a crash course about how we can see data, Prisma and stuff like that. So in this case, I think this is a good candidate to very simply just go to the documentation and let's go all the way here and let's just copy this. So we're gonna copy this, this is the seed and we're just gonna paste it in there. And it has a bunch of jokes in here as well. So what it's doing is it's just getting the Prisma client, it's instantiating a new uh, Prisma database. And then over here, what it's doing is it's just mapping through this function that returns this array of jokes, and it's just doing a db.joke.create, and it's adding those jokes in there. That's very simply what it is doing. Nothing insanely difficult. And that way we're going to actually seed our database and have some initial data and thus some initial jokes inside of it. Now what we need to do is to run this file. So to run this file, we're gonna utilize a package called esbuild-registry or register. So let's go over here to our terminal and we're gonna do an npm install and we're gonna install esbuild-register. So let's go ahead and install that into our uh, application and then we're going to execute node dash dash require es build dash register and then we want to execute prisma dot uh, prisma dash seed dot ts so let's execute this and once we're done that we should have the seeds inside of our database now we don't wanna run this script every single time we start our server. So what we can do is actually go to our package.json and then in here we can uh, execute a Prisma script. So over here we can say Prisma and then here we can have an object and we can call this seed. And then in here we can have that exact same command. So let me just add a comma over here so it stops yelling at me. So I'm going to say node dash dash require es build dash register. And then over here, we're going to say prisma dash seed dot ts. So that we're going to execute every single time we have our application up and running. So the next thing that we have to do is actually connect to our database from our server. So over here, we just created our server. Now what we need to do is connect to the database. So to connect to the database, what we need to do is of course go to our server. Now our server is still going to live inside of the app directory. So right in here to specify that this is server code, all we have to do just like we're doing it right over here is specify the name of the file, then dot server, then dot the extension. And then Remix would understand that, okay, this is our server. So over here, what we can very simply do is create a utilities folder, because over here, we're gonna use this utilities folder to connect to our database. And then here, we're just gonna very simply say db 
dot server dot ts and remix is going to be very smart and understand that this is going to hit our server side rather than the client side so in here again what we want to do is we want to connect to our server there's going to be a lot of prisma specific stuff to do this so well you guys probably know what i'm going to be doing we're going to go in here and we're just going to copy this file right over here and we're going to paste it in there and essentially what this is going to do is going to connect our Prisma client from our server to the database, a SQLite database that we created. And it's going to be doing some TypeScripty things. But at the end of the day, you can see here that we have just a Prisma.connect and it connects to our database. Really, if you want to utilize Prisma and you want to utilize it with a Remix application, this configuration is always going to be the same. So you know, you, you probably just have to write it out once or just copy and paste it every single time that you after you wrote out the first time. So, you know, not really a big deal. And I don't want to take a lot of premise away from Remix. So now that we have our database and we have our server, let's actually go back to the front end and start interacting with our server to get those jokes that we seeded inside of our database. So let's go ahead and do that in the next section. In this section of the video, what we're going to do is learn exactly how we can fetch data from the back end to the front end. Now, let's actually look at specifically what we want to do. So right now I'm in the slash jokes route. And what I want to do is I want to fetch all of those jokes so that I can render their names right over here in a list. And so we want to go to the slash jokes page and then fetch the data from the back end. In Remix, each route is responsible for fetching its own data. So again, what we want to do is we want to fetch it from the jokes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the jokes.tsx, which is the route responsible for that particular page. And then in here, we're going to fetch that data. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, how do I fetch data? You fetch data with a loader function. So a loader function in Remix is just a simple function that we export. So really, it just looks something like this export const loader. And then we're going to do over here async. And then we're going to do just a normal function. Now what this is going to do is it's going to return uh, loader data. And what loader data is, is simply an object with a key that is data, and then the value that is whatever it is that we want. So for example, over here, we can add a new interface or type. This is just some TypeScript stuff. So we can say that the loader data is equal to an object. And we're going to say that this is the joke list items. And then we're going to say that this is of type. Well, we're going to get back an array. We're going to have an ID for each element as well as a name. That's the only things that we need. So we're going to say that this is going to be of type uh, ID that is a string. So this is just some TypeScript stuff defining what we're going to get back. And then we're also going to get back a name that is also a string. And we're going to get an, an, an array of those objects. And so right over here, what we can very simply do is say that const data and const data is going to be of type data loader data. And this is going to be equal to jokes item list. And then in here, we're going to make our fetch. So right here is where we're going to make our fetch. So in order to actually make our fetch, what we need to do is we need to access the database from our utilities that we created. So we're going to do import and then from our utilities and we can do tilde and then slash utilities to go to the uh, root directory. So we can do tilde slash utilities slash db dot server. And this should give us access to db. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to do db dot. And then we're going to do the name of the uh, table that we want to access, which is in this case, joke. And then we're going to do find many. And then we're going to go ahead and just fetch this. So we're going to go ahead and fetch that. So find all of these jokes. This is how we utilize Prisma and get every single joke in our table. The last thing we have to do is define the type of the function itself. And this is a loader function. So what we can do here is we can get the loader function type 
and we can define that this is a loader function. All right, and then the, the other last thing we have to do is actually return that data. So let me just quickly explain what we're doing here. So this is a loader function that is going to fetch the data from the backend. And as you can see here, we're not really doing any HTTP requests. We're just kind of interacting with the database just there and then. And so this loader function is going to return an object. So it's going to return an object that has the uh, joke list item as the key and then the jokes. And so all we did here in the loader type is just define that type. So well, that's all really we did. And then what we're doing here is defining that this is a loader function and that we are just returning that data. Okay, so that's how we uh, kind of set up fetching data, but how do we actually fetch data and render it inside of the JSX? Well, in order to do that, what we very simply need to do is import a hook. And this hook is called use loader data. So over here, what we can do is we can say const data, and this is going to be equal to use loader data. And we're going to go ahead and invoke that. And so what this is going to do is figure out, okay, this is the loader function. And so it's going to call this function somehow magically, even though we're not linking them together, it's going to call this function and it's going to populate this data over here. And what we can also do is define the type of this. So we can do these uh, triangle brackets. And then in here, we can just very simply say loader data. So we can say that this is going to return an array of objects where each object has an ID and a name and they're both strings. So once that's done, really all we have to do is go to the UL, as you can see here, and instead of rendering this, uh, 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 and just, just kind of this static uh, uh, list, what we can do is we can iterate over the data. So we can say data dot joke list items dot map. And then over here we can say joke. And then here, we can render the li, so we can have some li tags. We can give it a key, so let's give it a key of joke.id. So joke.id, and then right over here, let's give it, let's use the actual link element. So we're gonna say link, and we're gonna give it a two of joke.id. So joke.id, and then over here, we're gonna give it a name of joke.name. So now if I were to write this properly and save it, and if you we were to go back over here, you can see that we get all of the stuff from our database. This is actually from our database. How terrific is that? That is incredible. So right now what we're doing is, um, I think right now what we're doing is we're a little bit over fetching. I think I would like to just show five instead of uh, instead of every single thing. So what we can very simply do at this point is inside of our loader function, we could just do some Prisma magic. So Prisma is gonna give us some options. So we can very simply say take, which means we only want to have five. So we wanna limit it to five. And we can also uh, get back specifically what we want. So in Prisma, we, we specified that we have these columns as well, the updated at, the, the created at, the content, and we're actually getting those data back as well. So if I were to console.log the data, and I were to go over here, and I were to give it a quick inspect, and as you can see here now, we're only taking five, but just to show you what's the other option. So if we were to go Okay, I guess it's not showing because it's some rendering, but you guys just take my word for it. We're getting back everything. And so what we can actually do here is uh, to specify exactly what we want inside of the loader. We can just say select and we want to select only the ID. We're going to give that a value of true. And we're also going to say that we want the, um, the, the name, which is going to be true. All right, and the last thing is let's actually order them by when they were created. So we're gonna say order by created at, 
or we're gonna say descending order. So it means the latest ones are gonna be first. All right, awesome. And now you can see, if I refresh, you can see we have all of our jokes and they, they take us to these pages. All right, so now the next step is to, uh, well, when we click on these specific queries or these specific jokes, we want to see the actual content of that joke. So the way that we're gonna handle that, it's actually very, very similar. We're gonna be fetching data, and so we need a loader function, but of course, this time, it's gonna be on a different route. In this section, we're gonna work on the slash jokes slash whatever that joke ID is so that we can render the joke inside of the outlet. So this is gonna be very, very similar to what we did over here. So what we need to do is we need to go to that dollar sign joke ID page, and then in here, this is where we are going to render our joke. And hopefully we get how we can do this now. So the first thing that we need to do is create a, well, a loader. So we're gonna do here, const loader, and then we're gonna say loader, and let's just say that this is a loader function right from the get-go. Notice how it auto-imported. Actually, you should auto-import from Remix, not this. So we're gonna say loader function, and this is gonna be an async function, and we're gonna go ahead and create it. Now, what we need to do is we need to get the ID. So let me just quickly copy this. So the route kind of looks like this right here. So what we need to do is we need to get this part from our route. So let me just zoom in one more time. Actually, no, this is the best I actually wait, no. No, well, let me zoom out. So we need to get this part of the route. Now this part of the route is going to be called joke ID and it's inside of the params. So what we can do here inside of this function, we can actually destructure out something called params and then we can just very simply get the jokes ID from those params. And then in here, what we can do is say const joke is equal to, and we can just say await, and let's get the DB. Let's see if I can auto import it. Yes, I can. So we can say DB dot joke dot find unique. So this time we want to find unique because we want to find just one joke. And then we have to specify, okay, well, what joke do we want to find? So we can say where, so where the ID, so where the ID is equal to the params dot joke ID. So joke ID, and remember the joke ID part is coming from the name that we called it, dollar sign joke ID. All right, so that's how we do that. And so if the joke doesn't exist, let's just go ahead and throw an error. So we're gonna say, if the joke doesn't exist, cause we could have some gibberish ID over here. We could say throw new error. We're gonna say over here, joke not found. However, if the joke does exist, then what we can very simply do is say, let's just do const data. So const data is equal to this joke. And then we can return this joke or we can return the data itself. And let's actually give this data a type. So we can say here type loader data. And this is gonna be of type that is joke. And let's actually get the type from Prisma client. So we can actually get the whole joke type from Prisma client. So what we can say here is from at Prisma client. So this is Prisma that's handling all of our database. We can actually get the type that we're gonna get back, which is joke. We can say here, joke. Okay, awesome. So that's really all we have to do. And then the, the, the very last thing that we have to do is in here, just do const data is equal to, and then we're gonna say here, use loader data. We're gonna get that from Remix. Yes, awesome. Let's also define the type. So we're gonna say loader data, and then we are going to just invoke it. And so in here, what we're gonna say is here's, here's your joke, and then we're gonna have the joke name. So let's put a P tag in here. And then right in there, we're gonna say data dot joke dot, and let's actually just have the joke content first. And then down here, we can add a link 
So we can add a link that goes to the um, that goes to the initial page, so the landing page. So we can just specify that with dot, and then over here, let's import that link. And okay, let's go ahead and save that. And then in here, we can very simply say data.joke.name. And we can specify that this is going to be a permalink. So now let's just quickly go over here. Let's give it a quick refresh. Let's just go to the slash jokes page initially. So now we go to the slash jokes. Now, if I were to click on road worker, you can see that I actually get the joke. I actually fetch it from the database. Here's a joke. I never wanted to believe that my dad was stealing from his job as a road worker. But when I got home, all the signs were there. Wow. My father is a thief. Why don't yeah, I don't really understand that joke. Frisbee. I was wondering. Yeah, we read this one. Let's read this other one. What did one plate say to the other? Dinner is <laughs> that one's funny. I like that one. And then skeletons. Why don't skeletons ride roller coasters? They don't have the stomach for it. Ha 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 ha. And if you click here, then I guess it just it just links us to this page right over here, which is the current page. All right, awesome. So that's pretty much it. There's there's nothing more that we have to do. Uh, the last thing that we have to do is work on this right over here. So we got to work on actually adding our own content. So right now we don't have that ability, of course. So let's go ahead and do that. The next thing that we need to discuss are mutations. Now, what are mutations? Well, mutations are when we mutate our data in some way, whether that's adding data, updating data or deleting data. What we were doing before is fetching data and we utilized loaders to do that. With mutations, we're not going to be utilizing loaders. Instead, we're going to be utilizing something called actions. Now, let's quickly talk about what exactly we want to mutate. Well, we want to mutate that jokes table and add a new joke when we click this add button. So let's actually go ahead and let's go to the route responsible for this uh, component, which is the new.tsx. And then in here, in order to wire up this form and allow it to interact with our server and add a joke to our database, all we have to do is export an action. And an action is very simply a function, an arrow function that performs a mutation. So let's just get right into it right now. So what we're going to say is we're going to say export const and we're going to say action. And we're going to give this a type of action function. This is some TypeScript stuff and let's get that from Remix. So let's go over here. We're going to get that from Remix. And this is going to be a normal async function. So it's going to get an async function. So just like we were able to access the params when we destructured it out, we can also access something called request. And what this is going to do is just simply be the request that we are trying to make. Now, what's going to be making the request? Well, it's going to be the form right here is going to be making this request. So what we want to do is we want to be able to get the form data from that request. So we can very simply say const form and let me zoom in one more here. We can say something const form is equal to a weight and then we can say we want to get the request dot form data. So remember, the form is going to be making this request and that we're getting access to it inside of the action and then we're getting that form data inside of this form variable. So then what we can very simply do is say something like const name is equal to form dot get and we want to get the name. And we can also do here const content is equal to form dot get and we can also get the content because that's the two things that we need to add. Now, the last thing is let's actually do a little bit of validation. So let's make sure that we actually get something passed in because right now what we can do is we can just simply click add without adding anything in there. So what we can very simply do is say if 
if uh, the name is not defined, so it's an empty string, or the content is not defined, what we can do is you can throw an error. So throw a new error, and we can say form not submitted correctly. Just go ahead and save that. And now if this is submitted correctly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a fields object. So we're gonna say fields, we're gonna say name here, and then we're gonna say content. So name and content. And then once we get that, we're gonna actually make a request to our database. So we're gonna say const joke is equal to await. We're gonna get the database from our utilities. Or we're gonna say db.joke dot create and then we're going to say that the data so we have to provide it with the data which is the name and the content and we put it inside of this fields <coughs> sorry about that guys i don't know why i had to just suddenly sneeze and then we can just add that in there all right cool so as you can see here something is going wrong this wasn't expected so it's saying here data is what is this saying let me just zoom out a bit so it's saying that the content is not assignable to da, 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 da. Uh, okay. So what we're going to have to do here, this is some TypeScript stuff. What we're just going to have to do here is just double check that this is actually a string. So we can say if type of name is not equal to string and then, or, or type of uh, content is not equal to string, then we want to throw this error. So this ensures that these things are strings. So this is actually going to go ahead and save it to our database. But once we save it, what I want to do, the final thing I want to do is I actually want to redirect the users to that particular uh, joke. So what we can say here is return and from Remix, we can get this redirect function. And what this is gonna do is redirect it to whatever path that we specify. So we can go ahead here and invoke it, and we can say slash jokes, and with template literals, we can do slash dollar sign. And then over here, we can provide it with the joke.id that we get back when we actually create it. So what's happening here is we actually don't have to touch this at all. So we don't have to touch this at all. When we have this method post, what this is going to do, as soon as we post it, it's going to get the content, which we have the name of here and the name here, and it's gonna make a request to this action, and this action is gonna do the rest, save it to our database, validate everything, and then we're done. So let's just go ahead and save that. And let's just do a quick refresh here. And let's give this a joke, uh, a new, let's call this, I don't know, microphone. I, I don't really know any microphone jokes. You know, I was making a YouTube video with a microphone. What a terrible joke. Sorry guys, I can't think of any jokes. So now when we click add, what should happen is we get redirected over here and you can see now we have microphones right over here. And if we were to refresh, you can see that it actually was added to our database. How simple is that?